doing something, it's getting involved, it's taking some action. So it's not just electing someone, but it's actually then going and making sure, or whatever it might be. So it's about participation. And then it's about budgeting, which is a difficult concept. So budgeting is what we all do in our lives. We all have limited money. We all have things we have to spend it on. And we all want to make that work so that we can spend money on the things we want to do or buy the things we need or visit the friends we like. So budgeting is all about trying to get the best out of the limit that we have and make sure that we've got an idea of what then we're going to use that money on, whether it's a holiday or more clothes or training, whatever. So that's a very broad introduction. So, wasn't a surprise. So the government, a few years ago, said, this was before the current government, they said that they would like local councils to try out participatory budgeting. They would like them to experiment with these ideas. And they came up with quite a long definition, which is about, fill that whole slide, which was trying to nail down what participatory budgeting is. And it was all about local people having a say in a budget, and then, what, you know, and they got a bit confused. So the simplest thing is, and this came from somewhere, is if after the process we feel that we have had an impact on that budget, then it's probably PB. But if we feel that at the last moment they decided, it's probably not. And I think that's the simplest definition. If we feel that we have made a difference, then it's probably like PB. So it's very much about how you feel at the end of the process. Has this made a difference? And do you feel that you're respected and that you are willing to come back and do it again? So the problem with that is it immediately sets up the idea of who's they and who are we. We're in this sort of fight over limited money. And actually that's a bit of a problem because actually everybody's involved. I mean one definition of a community is the people who live and work within a community. So that means that they should be within our community. So PB is about trying to have good conversations with people who we don't normally have good conversations and make sure that we're getting something done rather than fighting them. So we're trying to get away from that idea that adversarial, that sort of fighting over budgets and have good conversations. This is the only complicated bit I'm going to do. Can I use the flip chart as well? Is there a spare piece of paper on there? So this is, that's a picture from a county council in the north of England about how they are going to engage with their local residents. It's a line called a spectrum of participation or the empowerment line. And I'm going to say it comes, is this the right sort of the pen? It's not, it, is. it comes from a different idea, which is called the ladder, I'm not going to write it all, of participation, which was, in, which was thought of about 40 years ago in America, and an academic, somebody who was thinking about this, came up with this ladder of participation. And the bottom of the ladder is therapy. And that's basically a community has failed, or an individual you could say has failed, and you just go in and do things to them. You just go in and fix the problem. So something is broken down so badly that you just go and try and make them well. And the next level was information. It basically meant you told them what you were going to do before you did it. So you actually, actually had a conversation. It's a bit like going to hospital, and rather than just being in A&E, now the doctors say, right, these are your treatment options and we suggest you do this. So they inform you. And the next level is they consult with you. So they say, okay, what do you think about what we're going to do? What impact will that have on you? And then they basically decide whether they're going to send you for a heart operation or give you the drugs or whatever it might be. So they consult with you. This bit is not a medical one. The next bit is they co-opt you. They get you involved in the treatment. And typically, I think you might have seen this, I've seen this a lot, they ask you to go and be a, a participant on some partnership board. They ask you to go and join their meetings. But they don't tell you that you've got much power and you don't get elected, you just get chosen, you get co-opted, that's the phrase. <coughs> the next one is involved. And that's where they start actually help letting you set the agenda actually getting you to say, okay, this is what's important to us, and they start involving you, perhaps also in the delivery, 
and then that goes up to empowerment eventually through decisions. So that's the ladder of participation. And the important thing is to understand where you're on it, because if you think you're being involved and actually you're just being <coughs> informed, you're going to get frustrated. So that's just the only bit. So this bit over here, because councils don't like the ladder, because it sounds a bit like they're making them at the top of there, they turned it on its side. So it goes from communicating, they didn't like therapy, so they knocked it off the end. Communicating, consulting, involving, partnership and decision making. And we say that PB can help at all of those stages. So sometimes you do just want to consult, and PB can help with that. But what it's all about is moving people towards a place where they can have more control. And that's the theory of behind what we're trying to achieve here. Has any, anybody got a questions about that? Or is that well, one of the things that? is when you're co-opted, Mm -hmm. <coughs> Traditionally, and I can't think of any case where a co-opted has got a right to vote. So they'll might listen, they often mm -hmm. do listen to you, but then when it comes to decision making, you're out the door, well, even if they're doing it in front of you. Yeah, a bit like that. When I first got involved, I was involved in my community centre, and we there was a regeneration. They were spending lots of extra money, and we fought for a long time to get the community onto the board of the regeneration partnership. And by the time we got on, they'd spent most of the money, but at least we got there, so at least we could have some say. And before the meeting, the chief executive called all the community representatives aside and said, we don't vote in these meetings, we agree by consensus. So that means, basically, you have to agree with us. And we don't like how you're meeting before the meetings to try and influence it. It's a bit like union tactics, so that's not in the spirit of it. And the idea that the council didn't meet in order to decide before the meeting was silly. So we weren't setting the agenda. We didn't have a vote, but we were there, and so we gave them legitimacy until we caused trouble, sort of thing. And that's where I got into this area. But I digress. <coughs> the problem with budgets is that numbers are not very interesting. You're not going to get somebody coming out on a wet Saturday afternoon to look at budgets. People are frightened of them, they look boring, nobody's interested. And there's stuff coming out of the council all the time. Well, it depends on your understanding. So those are the football league tables. And I'm not a football person. I should have probably put it more London-based and irritated people. But the point is, if it means something to you, then you get something from it. So it's all about how they tell the story to you, how they involve you in understanding the budget. So an important part of participatory budgeting is getting people to the point where they understand why different budgets are important. Um, <laughs> So that tells the story, and, and, we, and the poorest, the people with the least resources, are often the best budgeters, and they just don't have time to mess around with public meetings where they're not going to get anything out of it. So the other side of it is making it sure it has a, some outcome from it. This is what we call the PB cycle. So this is the process, this is the, what happens when you set a budget, and you start by deciding to do it at the top, maybe you decide you're going to do PB in some way, participatory budgeting, we call it PB. So once you've decided what to do, then you go out and you get people involved. You start telling them about the budgets. You start saying, we're doing something really exciting, get involved in this thing. And then you get those are people that you've got excited to say, what's important to you? And you get them to set priorities. You know, do we need money spent on young people or do we need it spent on transport? Things like that. And then you come up with solutions, ideas that can make an impact to, to solve those priorities. And that might be set up play groups, it might be more training, whatever it might be. Then you do a decision, somebody decides what you're actually going to do, and then you go, you actually deliver it. So it might be that you start spending the money, and then you scrutinise it. Scrutinising and monitoring basically means you count all the beans to make sure the beans are in the right places, and you make sure that the money is being used as it should be. And then you learn whether you actually made a difference, whether it actually achieved what you wanted to achieve. And that's the PB budgeting cycle. And that's what local councils also do every year with their own budgets, or maybe every three years. And the point is, is the community involved at every point? Are the community involved in setting the rules at the beginning? Are they involved in getting people involved? Are they involved in setting the priorities? Are they even involved in delivering some of the outcomes, is the money going to go to them rather than be kept within the town hall or 
capital services, and are they going to be able to have a say in the scrutiny and monitoring? So PB is about getting people involved at all points in the budgeting cycle. Now the decision day is the exciting bit, so people focus on that. But it's important to say that you need to have an influence or you're going to miss out. All grasp that? No way. So participatory budgeting works best if you do it again and again and again. Because that last cycle is like a learning cycle. And if you learn that it worked, then you're going to tell your neighbours and tell your friends and tell everybody else and you get more people involved. So we say that you should do participatory budgeting over a number of years. Because they started small in the successful places, but they built it up over a number of years until they got the trust and they got lots of people involved. And if you like, you're part of year one, maybe. You're the people that might launch this. And through the year, through that budgeting cycle, not everybody participates all the time. What you try and do is get lots of people participating at the beginning, setting the priorities and coming up with ideas. Then you get less and less people involved through the year until you come to a decision. And then you go back to the community with that decision and get more people involved. So you can see it sort of narrows and goes out and narrows and goes out and narrows and goes out. And hopefully over a number of years, you build more participation. And that's what's happened in Brazil, and that's what happened in lots of other places. So once isn't enough. And the important bit is those little orange lines. Is In the middle, you're building lots of people who've been involved a number of times and can start getting to talk about the 99%. And can start getting involved in the other budgets and become active citizens. So this is what we're trying to achieve through the budget. So some of the ingredients... Some of the things that we know make it work is that the people at the top trust it, the people who are delivering it, the officers, trust it, and the community trusts it. So it's all about how you build trust. Because if you're in a fight over budgets, sometimes you're going to just end up wasting the money, building the fences between you or whatever it might be. So we need to get them on our side. So this is a campaign, but it's also a campaign about hearts. It's about convincing them that you not only have the right, but actually have some good ideas and can actually help deliver. The next one is a limited resource. Because if there's so much money sloshing about that it's all that everybody doesn't know what to do, then it's a problem. So it's good to define what the PB is. So rather than saying we're going to get involved in the whole 100%, which is sort of an unlimited resource and you will get boggled, you say, we're going to do it on this once you've got that limited pool, that limited source, then you can really focus on getting that bit right. The next bit is a good process. That is making sure that embedded in it are the values and principles that you need to make sure everyone is included. Making sure that you're having the meetings in accessible places. Making sure that there's proper checks and balances. People are being able to challenge the process as it goes along. Then, an annual budgeting cycle, so doing it again, that's another important ingredient. There's been lots and lots of PB in England, but often it's been once off. And people said, oh, that was exciting, or oh, we'll just go back to the old ways. So, it's about moving beyond that. All those things, in a sense, depend on some rules. So, part of the PB mix is coming up with a new sort of charter, or new sort of agreement with government saying, OK, we'll elect your councillors, and you get on with doing that, but you make a difference, and, and you make an agreement, and then we will also make agreements about making sure the process is fair. So that just it's not just the co-optees, it's just not the same old faces, as they call us, you know, that are involved. So we need a good process. You need local energy. Brazil is a great place, if anybody knows Brazil... There's a lot of local energy on the street. People are very <coughs> passionate. And we tend to be in this country a bit reserved and we sort of queue too much and things like that. So it's about getting people to actually get involved in a big way. There's something called a budget matrix, which I'm not going to go into, which is about having a transparent table. So, so something that people can actually nail things to. So the actual numbers are very important. And you need a better name than participatory budgeting. Because mm. it's a rubbish name. And we almost thought, should we change it to something? Well, the politician said, call it community kitties. That's nice and friendly when it started. Mm -hmm. But actually, that sort of limited it. So what we say is, well, if you're going to do this, it's your project, give it your name. Now, typically, it's been named by the council. So maybe now we have a 
chance in the people's budget is all about saying let's give this our name something that actually resonates with our heart so then it all started in Brazil but I'm not going to go into that because it would go 